Hey, what's going on everybody? All right, today we're gonna to be going over brakes and we're gonna be changing the brakes on a Kaufman uh, three car wedge with triple 7K axles. Now mine are Lippert axles and this will go exactly the same as if you were changing Dexter axles also. The, the parts in these axles are, are interchangeable. Uh, so this will work for both. Now then one of the first things you're going to notice with these is that there is of course a left and a right side these aren't universal all around uh, if you do need the the part numbers there they are left hand sides 296 651 i'll leave a description underneath uh where you can get these i actually did order these on off amazon these are uh these are actual lippert um from the factory uh, just so happens these got here super fast because the fact these are actually made in indiana i live in kentucky these came super quick, but I did order them through Amazon and uh, these got here in two days. So pretty happy about that. But there's the part number for the left hand, part number for the right hand, 296-652 for right. We'll go ahead and open these up. So of course the first thing you notice is that these, these are actual mirror uh, assemblies, the way that they're, they're put together in here. Uh, these do come with new hardware to mount and two new uh um, how do you call those uh two new butt connectors uh these do have you can see the dielectric all in there it's nasty <laughs> but that cap actually did pop off but you can kind of see how they work there you don't have to splice these you don't have to fray the wires or anything which is kind of strange because these came like that uh you just throw it in there this uh this actually slices through the jacket in two different spots I believe yeah two different places to make a connection so it'll slice through that jacket make contact with the cable the dielectric grease is going to help uh, carry that current all through there so you'll be good to go uh, there is not a positive or negative listed on here but in my experience and everything else that I've been reading on this you just really plug one in I guess they're a what do they call those dual pole or whatever or it doesn't really matter as long as the the circuits the same so one way to tell if this is which side is which uh, one is that it's actually on the sticker but you'll see uh, the arm on this with the magnet see that see that arm right there that's always going to face the front of the trailer another way to tell is that the smaller brake shoe is always going to be the front shoe uh, you can see how this one only comes up to here this one wraps around to the top it's it's much bigger you see how it goes all the way down to that that plate and this side stops pretty short here larger brake shoe to the rear but that's it that's what these look like these are the self-adjusting so hopefully it's a throw on and done once everything's initially adjust adjusted so let's get to putting these on there all right so the very first thing we got to do is jack the trailer up Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and take these lug nuts off and get this tire off here. Alright, next thing we're going to do is uh, get this cap off here. Just use a, a screwdriver and then I use a, a rubber mallet. Works pretty good. After you initially get it off here, you can just uh, kind of start to uh, work it off with the mallet. Now from here on out is where some paper towels are going to come in handy because this is messy. All right, we got our cotter pin here. We're going to have to take that off. Take that off. You just need a set of needle nose. Now 
Alright, we're going to take the castle nut off. This is where it's going to pay to have more paper towels, like I said. clean doing this, but it's almost impossible. Alright. Next we're gonna fish that washer out. Just bump it a little bit with the hub. There we go. There's our washer, and the front bearing came with it, just fine. Now then we're actually going to pull the hub. I lay this down on paper towel to get it out of the way. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the seal is busted. There's grease everywhere. It's so bad. All right, so our seal failed. But not only that, there's your uh, your rear bearing and uh, the race is inside there also. All right, more paper towels. Now this step right here, I would highly recommend uh, checking all your bearings so taking everything apart replacing the rear seal obviously this one needs it um, I have a whole new set of bearings on the way these uh, brakes actually just got here a day before they're actually supposed to arrive here today but they're probably not gonna be here till this evening so I'm gonna pull these off and get as far as I can today but I will be making a video on uh, switching out the bearings uh, everything both bearings, uh, both races, and the seal. So that'll come after this. I would highly recommend uh, if you're doing maintenance, do both at once because I mean, you're already this far. You might as well dig into the bearings while you're at it. But yeah, there is a lot, a lot of grease in the, inside this rotor here. And uh, this is actually. The first time I've had them apart. Now the reason I'm doing this is, uh, is I have lost a lot of braking power. Now there's not a ton of grease on here, but there's not a ton of uh, brake pad left either. Uh, magnet seems to be all right. Usually gets chewed up, just covered in grease though. Everything's covered in grease. So this is coming off, and like I said, we're this new everything all around on this trip. But I wanted to break this down step by step for you guys. That were wondering if you want to do it yourself i did call a shop that's right down the road um, anything whether it be chasing an electrical um, doing this here replacing bearings and all that uh, trailer shop's going to cost you about 80 to 90 bucks an hour uh, so if you've got a free weekend you can save yourself some money just doing it yourself it's really not that hard all right so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and take these brakes off here it's just five bolts. Uh, these in this case are 9 16 So the next thing to do is to cut the wires off of the back then we'll pop this off here and take it off.
All right, now we got that cut off. We just tap this a little bit. It shouldn't take much. That's it. Comes right off. One piece. Now we're just gonna grab our wires out of the way. Slide this on. Just like that. Just gonna go ahead and throw a couple of these on just in case, and I'll be back there kind of sliding around. All right, so I don't know how else this is gonna work. I couldn't really get a good shot um, <laughs> with the camera where it was. It was wanting to focus on all kinds of crazy stuff outside there. So then what we're doing is I have to find out, because this is all in a relay. Uh, these popping out of the axle, relay going across the axle to the other side these two wires are of course the brake itself and then these two go on to feed the next axle behind it so seeing as how i don't know what color these are because they're all spliced under here all right so there's your blue and white i don't know if you can see that yeah we can see it all right so fold this one out of the way we'll do all our hots first Take the closest one from here, and it's gonna go under and it's over. So essentially, I'm just gonna plug that into that slot there, and this one in the middle, and we'll do this one on the outside. Make sure they're seated there. Just give that a firm press with your hand. seated. I'm going to do this too hard. Don't want to crush it. Like I said, just want to make sure everything's seated in there real good. Basically get the calves flush. You probably can't see that too well. See how it's flush there? That's it. Good to go on that one. Now we'll do our negatives. Alright, I'll do the same with the pod with the negative side. Now, I know you guys can't really see this probably that well, but like I said, there's not a lot of room to work under here with a camera. Just trying to make sure everything's seated. Glad I double checked that one, because it wasn't. doctor that back up not crazy about that what do you guys think not too cool anyway you know it's only brakes who cares uh, now we'll just finish putting these nuts on here tighten those up all right guys and that's it now you're ready to uh, throw everything back on there hopefully you uh, checked or replaced your bearings uh, you throw everything back in the opposite order then you'll go and uh, do a little test run. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna seat your brakes or uh, bed your brakes. I've heard it called several different things. But essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna get up to about 40 miles an hour. Uh, you're gonna set your brake, you're gonna bump your brake controller up a little bit. You don't be locking them up. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go from like 40 miles an hour, you're gonna press your brake controller, just your, just your brake, not your truck, just your trailer. And uh, you're gonna slow down to about 20, 15 miles an hour. You're gonna do that over and over and over. You, you know, it says probably 15 to 20 times. It probably won't take that long. It never has for me. But what's new, it's gonna seat those against your hubs. And of course you wanna clean your hubs, especially if you had a seal fail. <laughs> but uh, we'll throw all this back together once we got our bearings in and we'll be good to go. And that's it everybody. I hope you guys learned something today. I hope that uh, this helps you out. I know that there's not a lot of, uh, there's a lot of info on changing electric brakes. There's not specific to this. And that was one thing I had a hard time finding, you know, part numbers and stuff like that. Being that I did buy this trailer used. Uh, but everything came together, you know, you dig enough, you'll find everything. But hopefully this consolidates everything for you guys and uh, hopefully it helps you out. So we'll see you next time.